okay guys so in this particular video we are going to look at uh, the entire deep learning project how we are going to continue further with it okay some additional deep learning concepts will also be introduced along with the project that you have to build once you have built the entire project you have to build it up only in collab no other place would work okay so you have to because we'll be taking it up for submission once you have built the entire project in collab the link to the submission of the project is down in the description of the video as a google form as you're able to see this is the google form which you have to use to submit the project you have to fill it up properly as well as there is a collab link right over here so you have to submit the link of your collab notebook where you have built the project for example if i am able to show you collab.research.com uh, <clears throat> let's take up an example for this particular google collab notebook right over here so it is taking up a second to load so give it a second right now so once it has loaded up, uh, just like in the video, you will be saying you have to create the entire project. Once the entire project has been created on the top right corner of this particular page, on the top right corner of this particular page, you are able to see this particular share button. Okay, so you have to click on this particular share button and then copy the link. Okay, so command C, copy the link of this particular notebook itself. Once you have copied that, you have to go to the Google form down below and paste the link right over here to submit your project. Along with that, please make sure that you are using the exact same email address that you were using in your attendance forms as well okay and for the linkedin post okay for the linkedin post it's not compulsory but if you want to show off what you have built in this particular boot camp on linkedin you can definitely post it right over there and share a link of that as well right over here okay so once this is over that would be it uh, this would be our final class we have uh, tried to cover up everything from right over here this class will be taken up by sahil rahman he has previously worked with companies like HP and Porsche as a data analyst and Instamojo as well so he will be uh, helping you guys out with data science as well as the project as well so thank you so much guys uh, let's continue with the learning process thank you perfect thank you so much for joining in on the last day of this boot camp today we are going to wrap up what uh, so ever we have you have guys have studied okay so for today I'm going to take this boot camp for the last day okay so since it's the last day i'm going to tell you about the ann okay and i'm going to demonstrate a single project in front of you as well and at the last i'm going to give you a project to do by yourself okay and i hope you guys already know the drill in order to get the certificate you need to submit 100 percent of attendance along with the project submission as well okay so do you guys know what is a neuron have you guys studied about neurons so far? Yes or no? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Uh, some are saying yes and some are saying no. Some that you guys have already studied about a neuron and it has been discussed in this boot camp. Okay. So we are going to continue from there only. Okay. Now, as we know, uh, how exactly neuron works, right? Uh, okay. No. So let me explain you how, what is the concept of deep learning and how exactly we can achieve it. Okay. Now, what happened is that uh, we have deep learning, okay? So, whenever we start with the journey of AI, right? So, in AI, we have machine, machine learning as well and then we have the deep learning as well. Now, the situation comes up that why do you need deep learning when you already have machine learning, okay? When you already have machine learning, then why do we need deep learning? Now, see, deep learning is more advanced concept of machine learning guys okay deep learning is more advanced concept of machine learning which has been discovered after machine learning that means we will be using machine learning for decades and then we realized in the early 2000 that machine learning is very you uh, know very concise we cannot use it to develop more complex application right so that's why we have deep learning now the entire motive of deep learning is to replicate human brain the entire motive of deep learning is to replicate human brain, okay? How we think, what are we, our thought process and so on and so forth. So this deep learning entire focus, entirely focus on human brain, okay? Are you guys getting this? Awesome, cool. Now, now the thing is that how exactly human brain works? Because why we need to replicate human brain because there are a lot of complex stuff that cannot be achieved by machine learning. Because in machine learning, you are giving a data, 
to a machine and it will going to learn from that data and we're going to respond right but machine learn all the models of machine learning are not able to take the responsibility to make decision okay now let's suppose we have two scenarios let's take a scenario to understand the difference between deep learning and deep learning and machine learning right so we have a teacher okay we have a teacher and then we have a student so what we have what happened in real life scenario is that suppose uh, a teacher has taken an exam out of 100 okay and the student has scored let's suppose the student has scored approximately 39 right and the passing percentage is 40 percent or passing marks is 40 percent so what happened is that rule says that anyone who achieve below 40 is failed right anyone who achieve below 40 or the marks achieve uh, anyone who achieve a marks below 40 is fail yes or no yes or no okay right so what happened you must have seen the real world scenario it often happens that whenever you go to a teacher and ask them that please give me one marks two marks or grace marks right so they will going to provide you the grace marks right which is absolutely against the rule which is absolutely against the rule but we make decision our decision is absolutely uncertain our decision changes from situation to situation right now if this thing has to be done by machine learning machine learning will be very strict machine learning will be very strict because machine learning program has been trained to be to follow a set of rules right so if you go to a machine learning model ask them that hey i am getting 39 i am getting 39 uh, i just want one uh, more marks for, like a grace marks to pass on machine learning will not going to allow you to do that because it is following a set of rules it is following a set of rules and a decision never changes mm -hmm. with the time situation right whereas in deep learning when we are trying to replicate a human brain because human brain makes decision differently in different scenarios okay the decision that human brain uh, makes is absolutely different in different scenarios that's why the birth of deep learning happened is it clear to everyone is it clear to everyone let me give you one more example so that you can easily understand it let's suppose uh let me draw a path okay so uh, excuse me for my drawing i'm not an artist okay perfect so let's suppose this is a path and this is a intersection and over here you are having your car okay you are having your car and let's suppose your workplace is here your workplace is here okay now while moving you see that there are two intersection one is a okay and another one is b okay now the scenario is that if you want to reach if you want to reach to your workplace if you're going by if you're going by this uh, road a it will going to cost you approximately two hours it will going to cost you approximately two hours because the road uh, take you to the village scenarios and hotels and so on and so forth it will going to take you two hours to reach to your workplace okay let's take the scenario b Scenario B says that if you're going to take the scenario B, road B, it will going to cost you 30 minutes. If you're going, you know, if you're going to go with road B, it will going to cost you 30 minutes. Now, if I ask you, if I ask you that which of the two road, which of the two road you will going to take to reach your workplace? Is it the first? No, it's the last class. Okay, it's the last class. So instead of sure, yes, sir, I'm taking the session for the last uh, last class okay perfect so uh, coming back to the question which road will you gonna prefer to take a or b to reach to your workplace come on come on come on guys b okay anyone else b exactly right so most of you will going to prefer the road b because the you know the time that has been taken is very less right so now what will going to happen if this is a machine learning model if this is happens to a machine learning model machine learning model always going to choose b machine learning model will always going to choose b right now as i mentioned that a human decision changes from situation to situation right now if i ask you same scenario road a will going to cost you two hours road b will going to cost you 30 minutes now the day is that you don't have much work 
okay you don't have much work and you don't want to uh, no uh, reach early to your workplace because you don't have much work to do and so on and so forth so you have decided to do a detour you have decided to do a detour enjoy the road enjoy the view and so on and so forth right which uh, road among the two will you want to choose which road you will going to choose come on a or b come on a exactly right now see the entire thing is same entire scenario is same a will going to lead us 2 hours b is going to lead us 30 minutes but the decision the human decision has been changed from situation to situation in the first situation when he wants to reach early he will going to take 30 minutes uh, route in the second situation when he want to do a detour when he want to enjoy or different or different excuses and all that he will going to take the road a right it might happen that uh, for the following day he hasn't done some work and he want to uh, give excuse to their fellow members that you oh, know uh, there was a lot of traffic and all that so he has chosen road a so this is the thing that deep learning is more you uh, know more inspired from deep learning says it how exactly a human human brain make multiple decision in multiple situations right so now deep learning is all about to replicate guys okay to replicate human brain always remember this thing deep learning is always about to replicate human brain okay it is always about human brain okay now how exactly our human brain will going to work out right now what happen is let's suppose uh, this is our hand okay this is our hand and this is our brain okay now let's see how exactly the coordination is being carried out now we know that all the nerves all the nerves has been connected to our, our brain in some form and they provide signals they provide signals to the brain okay and then brain provide them a you uh, know uh, it will going to give you a signal back that will going to tell you what how and what to response in a different situation okay let's suppose uh this is a winter time right so you must have used uh, some kind of heaters and all that in at your home right like suppose this is your heater okay this is your heater and you are bringing your hand in front of this heater okay now what happen is that in brain there's a calculation going on in your brain as soon as your hand is placed near the heater your calculate in the brain a calculation has been going on right so a chart has been created a chart has been created like this okay now this line is a threshold value this line is a threshold value okay now your brain will going to calculate the heat the brain will going to calculate the heat so let's suppose it has been started from here right now you have placed your hand in front of heater okay as the time passes by as the time passes by you can easily feel the uh the strength of heat or the, uh, the or you can say the you know the effect of heat will going to be get increase a uh, minute by minute time by time yes or no yes or no getting this right the more time you will going to place your hand in front of the heater the amount of sensation that you will going to feel will be higher and it will going to increase minute by minute time by time right or wrong getting this are you guys getting this yes or no come on come on guys come on are you guys getting this yes or no right okay so what happen is that as the time passes by as the effect of heat is going to increase automatically your brain creates a chart and it will going the amount as soon as the as soon as the effect will going to increase the chart will going to decrease it will going to get decrease 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 as soon as it hits the threshold value as soon as it hits the threshold value your brain will going to give the signal your brain will going to give the signal to your hand that now please remove your hand your brain will going to give the signal to your hand that now it's a time to remove your hand because you have reached to the threshold value because if you are placing your hand over here for more time your you can uh, you know your hand can get burnt right this happens yes or no this happens right so in the same way what happen is whenever you are the communication is been drawn the communication is been drawn between your, all of your sensory organs 
towards your brain and this message this message who, the postman who take all the message and deliver to the brain is known as neurons okay it's neurons guys okay neurons is responsible to convey the message from your sensory organs to your brain and then brain will going to process out that information and will going to return back the feedback with the help of neuron to you, your organs is this clear to everyone is this clear to everyone how much time takes to remove your hand uh, i haven't calculated that yet <laughs> okay perfect is this clear to everyone yes or no if you remember if you must have heard about uh, the greatest scientist known as the albert einstein right and you must have heard about the theory that when he died a uh, scientist has you know a stone in his brain and chopped it into uh, several part and try to find out how it is different ever heard about that incident anyone yes or no right now what happened when the sci when that particular scientist failed he has transferred all the you know brain pieces to the further scientist so they they can experiment on that and what was the resultant what what was the result of that thing the result was that number of neurons was more in um, is present more in the einstein brain if you remember right so neuron are the responsible people who tries to convey message from one point to another right so the entire scenario entire deep learning is based on neurons entire deep learning is based on neuron and now we are not talking about biological neuron guys okay we are not talking about biological neuron so in biological neurons looks like this if you must have uh, studied biology during your school days you must uh, you can relate with this diagram you must have seen like this diagram right this is a kind of neuron we have axon we have tail and so on and so forth right so this is the purpose of neuron that transfers from one point to another it transfers all the messages is this clear is this clear everyone yes or no please give me a confirmation guys is this clear to everyone yes or no okay perfect now now in the deep learning there are lot of models okay in deep learning we have lot of models we have ann we have cnn we have rnn right so since this is the last class we are going to talk about ann only okay cnn and rnn are different models cnn are for medias file if you want to classify any image right so you can go with cnn like a uh, google lens google lens use cnn okay tesla cars tesla cars use cnn right rnn is recurrent neural network everything that has been related to text okay all the natural language processing uh, for an example you have that application known as google translator right it uses rnn only okay so rnn be used by uh, all that operation where we are dealing with some kind of text right sentimental analysis or recommendation system and all that so we are going to uh, that has been included in rnn but we are going to talk about ann in this uh, topic okay in any other boot camp if 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 it ever happens we are going to talk about cnn rnn as well in those boot camps so currently we are going to focus on ann the full form of ann is artificial neural network artificial neural network or sometimes people call this as uh, neural nets as well okay they both are same neural nets and artificial neural network are same on neural network now if you see over here we have three words one is the artificial another is neural and another is network okay so what exactly does this term artificial mean right if you must have heard about moon we call moon as a natural satellite right we have two satellites one is a natural satellite and one is a artificial satellite right so what exactly that artificial word signifies in artificial satellite can anyone tell me that what exactly the word artificial signifies in the term artificial satellite come on anyone let's see who will be the first person to answer this man made exactly man made human made right so the same way we are talking about artificial neural network means we have two net neural networks one is the natural neural network that has been present in human body okay one is a 
नैचुरल न्यूरल नेटवर्क दैट इज बीन प्रेजेंट इन द ह्यूमन बॉडी एंड द आर्टिफिशियल न्यूरल नेटवर्क दैट हैज बीन क्रिएटेड दैट हैज बीन क्रिएटेड बाई टेकिंग इंस्परेशन ऑफ द नैचुरल न्यूरल नेटवर्क राइट सो दिस इज एन आर्टिफिशियल न्यूरल नेटवर्क राइट नाउ न्यूरल नेटवर्क न्यूरल नेटवर्क वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट न्यूरोन न्यूरोन इज वन न्यूरोन इज वन राइट नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ नेटवर्क वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ नेटवर्क राइट सो इफ यू आर फ्रॉम अ बी टेक स्टूडेंट और इफ यू आर इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट और यू मस्ट इफ यू मस्ट हैव नो लर्न अबाउट कंप्यूटर ड्यूरिंग योर स्कूल डेज यू मस्ट हैव सीन दिस काइंड ऑफ ग्राफ लाइक इफ सपोज आई एम हैविंग वन कंप्यूटर ओवर हियर एंड ओवर हियर आई एम हैविंग वन मोर कंप्यूटर एंड अदर कंप्यूटर ओवर हियर देन आई कैन ईजली कनेक्ट दीज टू कंप्यूटर विथ वन कंप्यूटर और यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड अबाउट द कंसेप्ट ऑफ लैन वैन एंड एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ ये सो नो लोकल एरिया नेटवर्क एंड ऑल दैट हाउ दे आर क्रिएटिंग अ नेटवर्क right how they are creating a network and we have different computers over here or different system over here right so this entirely be known as a network okay when we say neural network that means we are having a lot of neurons that will going to make a network out of it okay so we will going to have neurons we are going to have neurons suppose this is one neuron this is another neuron this is another neuron and so on and so forth we are going to have a lot of neurons and they will going to create a network okay now we are going to understand how exactly neural network works how exactly a neural network works how exactly neural network works okay now in a neural network we have three layers okay whenever we create a neural network we always have three layers in this we first have an input layer okay we first have input layer second we have hidden layer okay second we have hidden layer and third we have output layer third we have output layer okay these are the three layers that will always be present in our deep learning model okay input layer hidden layer and output layer okay no other layer will be added over here okay input layer will always be one or the starting layer output layer will be the last layer and it will always be one only right so this is the first layer this is the last layer okay this is the first layer through which the information will going to pass on to the next layer right like suppose if we have our hand over here so hand is standing as a input layer over here right from which the message is been given from which the message has been given to the brain right now brain will going to process out and then will going to give you some kind of output over here okay so we have input layer we have output layer and then we have hidden layers okay hidden layers are the set of neurons or you can say over here only the neural network will be going to work out okay so you can have many hidden layers okay you can have many hidden layers but one hidden layer is mandatory one hidden layer is mandatory is this clear is this clear i have to go very fast because i have to cover a lot of topics over here in ann right so let's go on is this clear so far yes or no is this clear so far yes or no perfect okay so we have input layer we have output layer and then we have hidden layer okay so input layer is the layer from which you are going to pass the information to the hidden layer hidden layer are the layers where the operation and the computation will going to happen okay hidden layer is the layer where all the computation will going to happen and then it will going to give you the output that yes this is the output okay so suppose you are uh, having a picture you are giving a picture of a dog right and you say that hey predict this predict this whether it's a dog or cat right so now it will going to go to the input layer input layer will be connected to, to the hidden layer you can have multiple hidden layer okay and that hidden layer will going to perform all the computation whether the uh, whether this image nose is looking like a dog uh, nose or whether eyes is looking like a dog eyes and so on and so forth and then it will going to give you an output yes it is a dog or no it is not a dog okay let's talk about the neurons how exactly neuron work so let's suppose this is a neuron okay so neuron is been divided into two parts the left part is known as the submission part left part is known as the submission part and right part is known as the function part right part is known as the 
function part okay so this is the submission part and this is the function part this submission will going to take lot of features this submission will going to take lot of features from their previous layer okay so let's suppose we are having a uh, one feature over here another feature and another feature okay let's suppose this feature is tail this feature is tail this feature let's say uh, i and then we have another feature known as let's suppose fur color for color okay so now what will going to happen that you need to give some input to a neuron you need to give two things to a neuron first you need to give the feature second the weight of that feature weight means that how much confident are you that this tail is been corresponded with that particular image that you are giving right so let's suppose this tail is x1 uh let's remove this this is a feature feature will be denoted uh, denoted by x1 sorry x then we have x2 and then we have this x3 okay then we have x3 over here now you need to give another parameter that will be your weights that will be your weights that how much confident are you that this is the tail of dog or this is the eye of that dog this is the fur color of that dog okay so you need to give the weight of with respect to each feature so let's write this is your weight 3 and this is your weight 2 okay so submission part what submission part will going to do it will going to uh, perform the submission of all this value it will going to follow you must have seen this equation y is equals to mx plus c did anyone see this equation ever y is equals to mx plus c yes or no straight line equation sorry linear line equation yes or no okay yes or no perfect so similarly we are going to follow this equation over here in the submission part if you if you have uh, not heard about linear regression right then you must be familiar about mx plus c where m is your slope and c is your intercept right so in the submission part this exact formula becomes y is equals to wx plus b okay so where w is the weight x is your feature and b is a bias bias means it's a constant okay so automatically the uh, machine will going to select a constant value and we're going to put it over here okay so we are going to provide the submission over here so the entire formula will going to become y is equals to first feature is x1 and then the weight so it will be x1 into weight 1 then again x2 into weight 2 then again x3 into weight 3 and then at last you will going to add a bias you will going to add a bias right so you will be calculating y from the submission part you will be calculating the y from the submission part when the submission part is been done the y value will going to pass on to the function part this function part is known as the activation function over here we use activation function uh activation okay we are going to use the activation function over here guys okay now what is the activation function this activation function will going to tell us that whether or not this is a dog or a cat whether this is a dog or a cat right so the decision making has been happening in the activation function right so we have different kind of activation function we have a sigmoid function we have relu function we have tan h function and we have many more other function right so let's talk about the sigmoid function if you must have uh, read about logistic regression right so we use the formula of sigmoid to decide whenever we are dealing with a binary classification problem okay so you are going to choose a function from here and then that function will going to decide what will going to be the output that function will going to decide what will going to be the output and then this portion will going to return you the output okay if suppose it's a dog then it will going to return one if it's a cat it will going to return zero and so on and so forth how you're going to define okay now there are other values as well that you need to make sure about is a loss function okay then we have optimizer okay loss and optimizer is very very important you need to understand about uh, this 
that whenever you are going to part, whenever you are going to uh, solve this kind of problem, so obviously you will not going to get 100% efficient, right? You will not going to get 100% efficiency over here because whenever you train a model and you ask a model about uh, a certain stuff, let's say you are bringing a dog photo, right? And you're asking a model that, is it a dog or cat? Your model will not going to say that I am 100% sure that this is a dog or I am 100% sure this is a cat. Okay, it cannot be done because 100, achieving 100% of accuracy is absolutely a bit impossible, right? So, it, it says 99% or something or 88% so on and so forth. So, all the rest percentage, all the rest percentage that has been unoccupied is known as a loss. Okay, so more the loss, less will be the accuracy more will be the loss less will be the accuracy always remember this thing more will be the loss less will be the accuracy and it's vice versa okay they are there are uh, inversely proportional to each other accuracy and loss are inversely proportional to each other okay now we are going to use a loss function to find out that how many how much loss has been done and we use this optimizer to minimize the loss okay we are going to use a loss function to rectify, to, uh, to, rectify to, to know that how much loss has been uh, achieved and then we are going to use the optimizer to minimize the loss. Is this clear? Is this clear? Yes or no? Is this clear everyone? Yes or no? Okay. Yes or no? Please respond. Perfect. So this is really complicated stuff, right? It cannot be understood in just one uh, session. I can easily understand it, right? But since we don't have that much time uh, due to the time constraint, I have to wrap it. Okay. So let's go on and check a uh, practical implementation. Let's create a project, simple project. Then I'm, yeah, this is theoretical. See, uh, in machine learning, in data science field, majority of the things are theoretical. Okay, because the implementation is a five minute work. Okay, so if you are in data science field, so I would say it is approximately 80 to, no, uh, 60 to 80% of theoretical knowledge you have to gain and other rest is a practical knowledge, right? Because a practical thing can easily be done with a snap of finger, right? Because we have a lot of libraries using Python of Python, so we can do that. So you should need to have a theoretical knowledge rather than having the practical knowledge. Okay, in the field of data science that corresponds to your data analysis, it might be your deep learning, machine learning, big data, cloud. Okay, perfect. So let's see uh, how we can create a project out of it. Okay, now let me connect this and increase the size. I think it's visible, right? So the first thing in a project you need to make sure is you need to import the respected library that you are going to choose. Okay. So we are going to create a section over here. I'm going to use import, importing the libraries. Okay. So I'm going to use all the libraries that I'm going to use. Okay. I'm going to use NumPy as NP. This NP is an alias. Okay. So this is just a naming convention, right? I'm going to use matplotlib, matplotlib.pyplot as plt okay i'm going to use a seaborn as well sns okay now the very important thing the library that i'm going to use is tensorflow okay you might have heard about tensorflow or you might have or uh, no seen uh, somewhere about a tensorflow right so what happened is that we have different different libraries to perform or different uh, task in uh deep learning okay so the major libraries let me write over here libraries of deep learning so you can have the reference libraries of deep learning okay so you have a uh, theano it's not thanos okay please it's not thanos it's theano okay it sounds like one right <laughs> second is keras and it's not keras it's keras okay then we have tensorflow we have pytorch these are some of the popular 
deep learning libraries okay these are some of the popular deep learning libraries okay so what happened is that earlier keras was a company okay they have introduced their uh, deep learning models and all that uh, all the algorithms then what happened that when tensorflow came into action tensorflow is from google so what happened they had a ma they made a deal and now you can access you uh, know each of the item from tensorflow if you want to access each of the item of keras you can access that with the help of tensorflow as well okay so we are going to install tensorflow you can read the documentation over net as well i'm going to import tensorflow and the alias for the tensorflow we use as a tier okay so let me import keras as well i'm going to import keras as well from tensorflow itself tensorflow let me import from tensorflow import keras okay is this clear is this clear everyone yes or no is this clear everyone yes or no please give me a confirmation okay now okay so let's talk about the next section so the next section will be importing the data set importing the data set so i'm going to take a data set from keras library itself okay so what happens is various libraries has a different section or different class of data set from which you can borrow some data set right so let's talk about keras so keras has a lot of variety of data sets okay so we are going to take one data set from keras itself so i'm going to say data is equals to keras because i am taking it from keras right so in keras we have a data set so if i write over here data set and then dot now which data set do i want so these are all the data set that is been available okay so if you're not if you're a beginner and you don't uh, you're not getting you uh, know a lot of data set in the market you want to start with a simple one you can start with these predefined data set for you okay otherwise you can download it from kaggle as well as it will going to suits you okay so today we are going to use this mnist data set okay so now what we're going to happen the data will going to apply it over here okay so the data will going to be applied over here okay so let me show you how exactly it will going to work look like perfect so an instance has been created an instance has been created into data objects if i'm going to write data it will going to show you the location see the address and the location will be shown up over here right but i want to see all the data right so first of all i want to have to download it from keras hub okay so wherever the keras has you uh, know imported all the data set i have to import over here so i'm going to use uh df a variable where i'm going to say data dot load data okay this load data will going to download the data set okay and we're going to store it in df okay let me run this now see it is downloading two data set it is downloading two data set one is your training data set and another is your testing data set guys okay it is downloading two data set one is your training and another is the testing data set right so what i'm going to do is if i print df over here see this so these are all the data set of an images okay always remember this thing that image is been created uh, uh with pixels right we have pixels in images each pixel values range from 0 to 255 okay it cannot be greater than 255 or it cannot be lesser than 0 okay now over here if you see that we have converted uh, all the image into the uh, matrix form into a matrix form right wherever there is uh, no color we are getting 0 Wherever there is a slight in shade of a color, you will be getting all the values, right? But these value will cannot it cannot be exceed from two fifty five. Okay, this the range of this value will be between zero to two fifty five only. Okay, now since we have two uh, data set that has been got into DF, that is your uh, training set and testing set. I am going to split the data set. I am going to split the data set. So I am going to create uh, a DF. So I am over here. I am going to store. training data set that is your training data set and y train over here i'm going to store our testing data set y underscore test okay so what will going to happen the training data set will going to come up over here the testing data set will going to come up over here and training data set the will going to have x train that is your feature y train will going to uh, contain your uh, output or target value right similarly over here in the text 
in the test part as well. Okay, let's run this. Now let's check x underscore train. Okay, dot shape. Can anyone tell me what does this shape function will going to do? Can anyone tell me what does this shape function will going to do? Anyone? Anyone? What does this shape function will going to do? Anyone? Come on. If you have uh, read about uh, NumPy, right? If you have read about NumPy, it will be easier for you to tell me that why we use shape function and what shape function will going to do. Anyone? No one? Okay, so shape function will going to tell me how many number of rows are there, how many number of columns are there, how many uh, total number of uh, uh, no, matrix has been present. Okay, so over here, if I'm going to run this, it will going to say there are 60,000 images. Okay, and each image is, is having the resolution of 28 by 20. That means the shape and the size okay, over here, the rows, right? So suppose if we have a pixel, sorry, if we have an image, image has been created of various pixel, right? So it says 28 by 20, it means that 28 pixels in a single row and 28 pixel in a single column. Okay, 28 pixel in a single row, 28 pixel in a single column. Okay, and 60,000 images are been given for training data set. Okay, let's check for the testing data set. How many data uh, are being given for the testing data set? So 10,000 data set has been given, right? 10,000 data point has been given for the testing purpose. So in total, we have 70,000 of data points. In total, we have 70,000 of data points, right? So let's check one image. Let's check a single image. X underscore train zero. Okay. So if you see, this is a single image. This is a single image. Wherever there is zero, that means it's a, uh, you can call this as a darken area. You can call this as a darken area as well, right? And wherever there is some value, if you see some value over here, this value. So here something has been written or something has been shown right now if you want to see some image if you want to see this image this is a this is a pixel value image right i want to see what exactly is the actual image over here so you can use matplotlib okay so i'm going to use this function plt dot mat show and i'm going to write x underscore train zero to show me the image kindly show me the image now the image is this this is the image okay can you see this darken area wherever there is darken it has been reflected by zero and whenever there is some kind of shade okay whenever there is some kind of shade according to that the pixel value will be appear over here but no pixel value can exceed 255 or the range of 255 is this clear is this clear to everyone yes or no come on okay Okay, yes or no? Okay, perfect. So if you want to print some more data points, you can print that as well. You can loop this out. Okay, so if I'm going to loop this out, let's see, let's see, let's see. So I'm going to say for I in range 10. And instead of the zero, I'm going to replace it with I. Okay, so what will going to happen? It will going to print me the top 10 images, right? So if you see, these are the top 10 images. So over here, the data set is all about the number data set. So we are having a lot of images. Each image is, is having, each image contain a number from zero to nine. Okay, now we are going to give uh, some image and then our model will going to classify which image is there. Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? So on and so forth. Is this clear to everyone? Yes or no? Okay. Now the next process is to flatten the matrix. Now the next process is to flatten the matrix. That means convert the matrix into one dimensional. Okay. If you have heard about NumPy, you must have been known about the dimensions. Okay. Now we are going to flatten our matrix to convert it into a single dimension, guys. Okay. We are going to convert this. To, uh, to make this into convert this into a single dimension okay so now let's come up over here let me show you for the testing part y underscore test dot shape 
if I'm going to run this, it will going to say I'm having 10,000 values. That means it is the series. It's a series part, right? So even though if I print y underscore test, you will going to see it's a series, right? We have a single array and the dimension over here is one dimension. See, end dim. It's one dimension, right? But if I print x underscore test end dim, okay? It will going to say that it's a three dimensional, right? It's a three dimensional. We don't want 3D. We don't want 3D, right? So we are going to convert this. We are going to flatten the matrix. Flatten the matrix means that you are reshaping your matrix or you're converting your matrix to your uh, one dimensional, right? So I'm going to say y underscore train, okay? Underscore flat. So over here, I'm going to store my flattened matrix. So I'm going to say flat, sorry, x underscore train. I'm going to reshape. I'm going to reshape, okay? So I'm going to reshape from length of x underscore train into 28 cross 28, 28 cross 28. Okay. This length means, this length means if you have, uh, you know, if you are familiar with uh, NumPy, then you can easily use the function reshape. I want to convert this in such a way that this will be the length. Okay. Or if you don't know the length, instead you can use minus one as well. So it automatically detects the length of the array and then 28 by 28. Okay. That means 28 by 28, it will going to more, uh, it will going to have the multiplication of the entire pixels. Okay. So now let me copy this again and paste it over here because we have to have for the test value as well. Right. So test value. Okay. Now I'm going to run this. Now let's check whether the dimension has been changed or not. So this is for the entire part, right? So we need to check for the images. It is two dimensional, right? So now let's check what will going to be the dimension. End dim. Perfect. Now if we see we are having one dimensional over here, right? So now everything has been converted into one dimensional and now we are good to go with the model creation. Okay. Now let's start with ANN model creation. So let's do this. ANN model creation. Okay, so now we are going to see how we can create a artificial neural network. So for that, I need to have some uh, stuffs. So I'm going to use TensorFlow. And in this TensorFlow, I'm going to use Keras and I'm going to import sequential. Okay, the sequential will going to help me out to create the layers. Okay. This sequential will going to help me out to create the layers. Oh, this is not flow. This is flow. TensorFlow. Okay. Next, I'm going to use TensorFlow.keras only. And dot layers. Okay. And I'm going to import dense layer. I'm going to import a dense layer. Perfect. Now this, uh, what is this? Cannot import the dense from the TensorFlow Keras. Uh, not an issue. Let's import this from Keras itself. From, sorry, from Keras.layers. Import dense. Okay. Okay, not the, it should be dense. Okay. And TensorFlow dot. Now it should work. Perfect. Okay, now this sequential will going to contain all the layers. Okay, and this dense will going to help us to create multiple hidden layers. Okay, this dense will going to help us to create multiple hidden layers and the sequential will going to help us to store all the multiple layers. Okay, now we're going to start with model. Okay, this model is the object. This model is the instance of our model. Okay, I'm going to start the bucket using this sequential. Now in this sequential, I'm going to contain multiple hidden layer. Okay, so the first hidden layer will be dense, second and third and so on and so forth. So I'm going to use a uh, list data structure. List data structure. Now let's add the first, uh, first hidden layer. Dense. Okay, now it will going to ask you the unit. Unit means the number of neurons that you want to have in the first hidden layer. So I'm going to say I want only 10 uh, neurons in the first hidden layer second the input size because the 
you need to make sure that the first hidden layer should be connected with the input layer right so i need to give the input size input uh, shape as well that what exactly is the shape of the image right now the shape of the image is 28 into 28 that is 784 yes or no right how i know that it is 784 let me show you if suppose this is your uh x train dot sorry not dot zero dot shape if you check the shape you will be getting 28 into 28 not the x train sorry this is should be x train flat okay it will be 784 right with the help of this 784 i already know the input size will be 784 right now i need to provide an activation function which i have already told you which will going to help us to make a decision so activation is over here will be sigmoid okay we are going to use sigmoid function all the documentation is being given to keras uh, documentation panel and tensorflow keras documentation panel you can kindly refer to that okay for more uh, information now i want that while this model is going to train if any loss will going to occur i am going to define an optimizer so that even though if a loss will going to occur optimizer will going to help us in each epoch to lower the loss so we know that if loss will be lower the accuracy will be high right so we are going to use model dot compile function okay in this compile i am going to give a parameter known as optimizer okay and i am going to use the optimizer name as adam so we have a lot of optimizer you can search it on the keras website or documentation itself okay I'm going to use a loss which will going to tell me that oh uh, no how much loss has been created so which function I'm going to use I'm going to use sparse categorical uh, cross entropy so I'm going to use a uh, sparse categorical cross entropy okay and last is your matrix last is your matrix for your accuracy right if you have uh, done uh, machine learning then you might have known that there are different matrix for to find the accuracy right we have r square we have rms we have uh, rae we have a uh, confusion matrix and all that right so if i want to get the accuracy so which matrix according to which matrix do you want me to show the accuracy so i'm going to use the accuracy i'm going to use the accuracy right there might be some confusion matrix and so on and so forth you can refer to that so now i'm going to run this perfect now we are going to start with the training our model now we are going to start with training our model train or fit okay training or fit the model okay so now i'm going to say model dot fit okay now i have to give the data over here x train underscore flat and y underscore train okay i need to give another parameter known as epochs okay epochs means that how many times do you want your model to see the data right now we know that more the time just understand in this way epochs means that uh that more you are going to study more you are going to thorough with that a uh, concept more better you can explain it or more better you can get marks right like suppose uh your teacher said told you that uh in the upcoming uh, weekend i will be taking a test on the topic uh magnetism let's suppose right you have given a read to magnetism now does that mean that you uh, you have understood everything does that mean you have got all the knowledge of the chapter magnetism by looking it at once or by reading it yes or no tell me yes or no come on come on come on tell me guys your teach your teacher told you that in the upcoming weekend i will be taking a test on magnetis magnetism chapter which you have never ever seen right now you have started to uh, learn about magnetism right on the first go you have looked everything and you have ended up right can i say that on the first go only i have understood and have acquired 100 percent of knowledge no right now on the second go when you are going to go, go when you are going to go through the chapter your confidence will be more 
right now it will be an ongoing process the more you will going to read the chapter over and over again the more better you understand that chapter or more better you understand the equation and you can solve any kind of problem right similarly is the epoch similarly is the epoch epoch says that how many times do you want your model to see the data the more the time uh, the model will going to see the data the more better it will going to be trained if suppose this data is the differential data right where you have to differentiate whether the image is uh, is containing the L, uh, no digit 0 1 2 3 and so on and so forth the more your model will going to see the data the more better it will going to differentiate between the different different features that it, this is zero, this is one and so on and so forth, right? So you can say that even the epochs also plays a very vital role in the accuracy. More the epochs, higher will be the accuracy, okay? More the epochs or uh, high will, higher will be the accuracy, right? But not at the extreme level, not at the extreme level. You cannot go with 1000 epochs, 1000 epochs to acquire uh, 90% or 98%, no. Right at a certain point, your epochs will going to start decrease or will going to maintain the constantency. Right? Let's say to save the time, uh, let's say we are going to go with ten epochs. Okay. Now, when I'm going to run this, when I'm going to run this, we will be able to see all the details on the first epoch. What was the accuracy? What was the loss? And so on and so forth. You guys have to notice that as soon as the loss will going to decrease automatically uh, uh, accuracy will going to increase okay so shall we start with the training purpose shall we start with the training purpose yes or no okay come on come on guys tell me shall we start with the training purpose perfect awesome let's start this and keep your eye on the output please now see this is the first epoch this is a loss and this is accuracy. First epoch is done. Now second epoch. Then we have the third epoch. See, fourth epoch is to be done. And if you see, a loss is been decreasing and because we have used the optimizer, okay? And accuracy is been increasing, right? So if you see they are, uh, you can say intercorrelated, okay? Or inversely proportional to each other. Now the last epoch is been left and done okay so now if you see in the last epoch we have achieved the loss 5.23 and accuracy is 89 that means 89 percent our model is 89 percent confident that if you are going to give any kind of uh, image it will going to uh, uh, tell you that it is a zero one or so and so forth and it is 89 percent confident if you see from starting we have achieved approximately 84 percent and after the epoch as the epoch has increased we have achieved 89 that means five percent gain five percent gain in the accuracy that result in the loss of loss function is this clear is this clear right so now our model is being trained now what we have to do we have to test our model yes or no we need to test our model so we are going to test our model over here okay i'm going to say y underscore predict all the predicted value will be stored into the y predict. So I'm going to say model dot predict. What we are going to predict? We are going to predict x underscore test underscore flat. Yes or no? So let's run this. So model has been predicting. So now model has been done with the prediction. So let's say y underscore pred. Let's run this. Perfect. So these are all the values that model has predicted. These are all the values that model has predicted. So for the first image, it will be 4.9. That means if you are going to round this up, it will be 5. For the second image, it is 0, so on and so forth. Now we are going to evaluate the matrix. Now we are going to evaluate the matrix to test out how much efficient this is. How much efficient this is. Right. So now if I say y underscore test y underscore test okay so if you see over here this is your y underscore test and this is your predicted value this is your predicted value of x underscore test underscore flat right so you can easily compare how exactly how much they have uh, how how have we how our model has performed okay how our model has performed or uh, even though if you want to evaluate your model if you want to evaluate the model you can evaluate your model as well model dot evaluate okay over here you are going to give x test underscore 
flat and then you will going to give your y test as well right now it will going to evaluate this and it will going to tell you that if this is your data then you will be uh, achieving 89% of accuracy with 6.6% .6 of loss is this clear to everyone is this clear to everyone yes or no okay yes or no perfect so now this is a simple ann that we have created and over here we have used only a single hidden layer that means this is your first hidden layer okay if you want to go forward you can create multiple hidden layer as well suppose now you want to create another hidden layer so what you can do is just copy this and paste it over here this is your second hidden layer okay and you need to make sure for the second hidden layer you don't need to give input shape for any other layer okay only the first layer should be connected with the input all the other layers should not be connected with the input right so you don't need to give the input layer over here and number of neuron is totally dependent upon you you can go with 20 100 whatsoever it's totally dependent upon you right so this is the entire session about ann how you can create your model and so on and so forth okay let's come to the project part that you need to do and submit okay in order to get the certification so let's see perfect so let me provide the jamboard link first perfect so the jamboard link is here and this is your data set link okay so we have used ma uh, mnist from keras i want you to use cypher 10 i want to use cypher 10 okay i want you guys to use cypher 10 and please don't try to copy from here right it should be unique it should be genuine use cypher 10 okay to evaluate your model and your model should be uh, going to give you higher accuracy or more better accuracy okay is this clear everyone yes or no are you guys cleared about the project okay so you need to do the project you are having a one week time and how you have to submit click on the share button and while sharing your project you need to make sure that instead of this restricted if you are submitting your file link having this option be restricted we cannot able to check your work so kindly change this from restricted to anyone with the link okay when it is done then copy the link and provide over here where it is written submit notebook so provide the link over here is this clear everyone is this clear everyone yes or no okay perfect and that's all for this entire bootcamp see you guys in the next one kindly do the project you have a, a week time to do all the part jamboard link is also been provided so kindly refer to this is it clear to everyone yes or no is this clear to everyone yes or no perfect so thank you so much for joining in enjoy your time have a great uh, time and good night See you all in the next bootcamp session. Thank you so much.